First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. Bless her heart. Tic-tac-toe a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I am, no, sorry. It's not about making it. Is it about making it better? Is it? I don't, I get weird when I disagree with Democrats on anything. It makes me immediately think that, agree. what? You mean agree with Democrats? Yeah, that's what I said, right? Did I say no, agree? You said disagree. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Whenever I agree with them, I'm freaking out. Yes. It's like, wow, you like this and I like, I may like this. What? I'm skeptical. I am. I'm always a skeptic. I am Diogenes reborn. The original cynic skeptic. All right. So welcome back to the show. Dana Lash here with you. Top of this third hour. It's Wednesday. Uh, always good to be with you, of course. I'm letting you know just what we are watching all this TikTok stuff that's happening. Uh, it's got to go through the Senate. Here's my, here's what I keep coming back to on this bill. And I actually think you might not think that this bill is important. Maybe you're not, I'm not on TikTok because I just can't. I'm allergic to like, I'm annoying about this. Let me just set it up. I needed, I'm going to bring the tugboat in. So bear with me. I needed to get a, I like to bake, right? And I needed to get, a white like marble pastry board because I have black countertops right and we have full sun in our kitchen my countertops are always weirdly warm doesn't matter what time of day it is it, they're just warm they hold all the heat and it's like the opposite of like a travertine right like a travertine is always cool my countertops are always warm and I like to bake and it was a real problem whenever I was doing, and I noticed this especially over lockdown, whenever I was doing my pie crust and everything else, it didn't matter if I had my butter in the freezer. It didn't matter if I put my rolling pin in there. It just was so fast. I couldn't work fast enough, and my pie crusts were just sucking. So I was reading all these cooking uh, website, baking websites and all this. So I was like, I'm going to get like just large enough for a pie crust that if I want to, I can even put it in the freezer for a, a minute of time. It's marble, so you can't, you know, you got to be careful, but... You know, just to have something cooler that I can use to make my crust and keep it in the shade. And I looked everywhere because whether it was at Williams Sonoma or Sur La Table or even like restaurant wholesalers, everything was made in China. Everything I found was made in China. Made in China, made in China, made in China. I looked for like two months, almost three months, trying to find a good pastry board and I finally found one that was made in Taiwan and the marble was so oh yeah I look where the source where the marble source from it was like sourced from South Asia not it wasn't uh it was maybe a little China adjacent but it wasn't Chinese per se but it was made in Taiwan so I got that one and I've been happy with it right and ever since then I, unless I can absolutely avoid it, because we have to be honest, there's so much that comes in from China. I, if it's made in China, I don't need it. Like I have a rule that if I can't pay cash for it, I don't buy it. Like I don't like to have debt. I am nuts. Um, and if I can't get it not being made in China, then I don't need it. So I'm really, I try, I know it's difficult with things like antibiotics and stuff like that because that's where they're sourced from. So... Going back to this, I, I'm not on TikTok for that reason. I don't like doing Zoom for that reason. I mean, I, will, I have told people who wanted to have meetings about this or that, whether they're in New York or D.C., can you hop on a Zoom? And I'm like, no, I can't. Sorry. I will literally not meet with you if that's what you require. I don't care. I won't do it. As Kane can attest because he's been privy to a lot of this. So with this app, this is even weirder because ByteDance owns them. And I like Senator Rand Paul. He's like one of my favorite people. I did correct him a little bit last hour because he was saying that, you know, 60 something percent 
uh, of ByteDance is actually owned by other people. But then in 2021, we forget that the CCP, ByteDance, they bought the golden share so they can outvote all the other shareholders. They control all of it. That was in 2021 that that happened. The golden share they purchased at CCP. I do not want to run the risk, and I'm seeing this happen everywhere, of being tempted to use, to have my patriotism expertly used against me by a foreign adversary. And that's what I hear happening. Those who are saying, well, it's not really owned by, it is though. Uh, Those who say, well, the government shouldn't be able to tell you what, I agree, but that's not what this is. I don't believe that illicit behavior or espionage is a free speech issue. And I'm a free speech purist. I don't believe that harvesting your private data and sending it to Beijing is a First Amendment protection that falls under that. But at the same time, I can't say that I'm entirely comfortable with the idea of the government demanding any company divest or sell this as a result, as a, as a, in order to continue doing business in the U.S. or being available on app stores in the U.S. Even though I understand all of this nuance, it is so ingrained in my DNA. I have such an issue with it. Where do you stand on this, Kane? Where are you at on this? The TikTok thing. That's what we've been talking about just now. Well, I know. I'm just I'm looking ahead. But um, so, yeah, the TikTok thing for me, I've never used it. I know my youngest uses it. But are you uncomfortable with like with like bite dance? Or, or them telling by dance they have to divest in order to continue doing business here. I, it's, it's suspicious to me because I think the government control is what will always be the thread that continues through all of this, no matter how it evolves. Government control will always be there. And how are they going to, like you, you had brought this up last hour, how are they going to afford a $240 billion company? Who's going to buy that company? Yeah. Only governments can do that, could collectively or do that. Like Musk. Or somebody, well, he's, you know, he's even limited. At $240 billion, he's pretty limited, too. Um, I don't know. It's To me, it's a dangerous thing for government to get involved. The fact that the left is happy about this makes me suspicious. I wouldn't say it's all the left. No, because, it isn't. I mean, you have people like... But all the suspicious players on the left yeah, love it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I... I, and I know you had brought up, like, well, doesn't this open an attack on Elon Musk? I don't think it does because Elon Musk is not considered one of the four f- foreign adversaries. No. That is defi- that is defined in that the That is defined I in did there. look. And so what I'm thinking is this is just a step towards in more of that. In what way? Like, well, how would they expand so, on this? Say, for example, they find some way to justify saying that Elon Musk's operation of X is causing something in the realm of national security. And somehow they manufacture something that allows uh, the at least the narrative in the public to at least seem that X has gone through those four hoops that they talked about in, the, in this legislation. And now they can target whoever they want. They just have to manufacture enough uh, information that fills those hoops so that they can go after whoever well, they want. Well, because he's not China or Iran or North Korea or Russia, I think that that kind of frees him from it. I will say that it is specific there because when I talked to Brennan Carn, I was like, okay, define foreign adversary. And he's like, well, it is defined in that. Does he have I any business in interest in China? He does. Oh, he totally does. He absolutely yeah, does. Yeah, so that's the other thing. That's and we the, talked about that yesterday. He totally does. He totally does. So He I, needs that Chinese market for Tesla. I envision the government finding a way to use that information. But he's and, not domiciled there. No. But that, again, what does that matter when the government has a campaign against you? The truth doesn't matter. Oh, I know. I, I agree. It is. This is a, it's a sticky wicket. Yeah. It is. This is where I don't know where I land yet. I agree that there is some vagary in the legislation. From what I've read, there's I had a couple questions. I do agree that. I don't, in the bill, I don't think that it establishes, well, you know, you if you're adjacent to one of these four foreign adversaries, because it does list four, and it is defined, a federal statute does define it. However, I'm very wary 
because of how we saw the Patriot Act abused. They literally used, you know, remember the Patriot Act, this was after 9-11. And uh, I remember Republicans were saying, I, I got yelled at again by Republicans because I was like, why do we need all of this? Why isn't this go back to Ben Franklin's quote, if you think that you can give up some liberty for safety, you deserve neither. Um, there were people who you're just so, oh, Danny, you're so dumb. You don't know. I was in my, I guess, what, 20s when all this happened. You're just so dumb, Danny. You don't know. I'm like, well, I think I do. I feel like this is a little bit egregious here, just a little bit of an overreach. And now look what happened. It was abused and manipulated and extended to include parents who spoke up at school board meetings. That's not an exaggeration. The reason that the FBI was able and other law enforcement agencies were able to look at parents in that way is because every single report was arbitrarily classified as a domestic security issue. Therefore, it amounted to essentially domestic terrorism. That classification was added later in their system, as was revealed talking to a House subcommittee when they were testifying on all of this. That was made possible because the Patriot Act reduced those boundaries between these agencies to prevent certain bits of the law from being applied to everyday average citizens simply over political dissent. So that's, that's an, that is an actual real concern. And I think that some Republicans can't get mad at other Republicans or other conservatives or even other libertarians for that matter. You have to understand these are people who have seen all of these abuses for the past decade plus, I remember in Missouri, Tea Partiers were listed as potential domestic terrorists by the Missouri Highway Patrol under Governor Jay Nixon. It was the MIAC report, which I had broke the news on and reported about exclusively, still up online on my website, because flying the Gadsden flag, etc., so the idea that anything that the government establishes like this, the potential of it to be abused and or weaponized and extended to apply to other individuals over political dissent is not only a very real possibility, it's not even a possibility, it's history. It has happened. It has happened. It happened in 2010, 2011, 2012, and most recently with parents at school board meetings with the FBI. So you can't, they, I know, because I see a lot of infighting. Republicans can't get mad at these other Republicans for simply being worried about history repeating itself again. That being said, do not allow your patriotism to be weaponized against your concern for national security because China would love to be able to tap into your patriotic sentiment to protect its ass.